Ikukumo no ba mulera tikun tonghit kun tonting ne boboje mata ne Kuyami juz chikata na patoga ya hulki kokogala jiji ga wona bot atagwa kegi Ronda di hotonga kun hanka bi Wanna kun bez ching palamule achuta
Yeah, what do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else you want to know? Hey, don't worry. I think you've got enough there as it is. You don't want to overload yourself on stims. Otherwise you might destroy your adrenal system. A real warrior knows his own limits and doesn't overestimate himself. There anything else you need? Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Request. I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. Statement. As you wish, Master. The first stage is the simple one, and that is accessing my central control cluster. This may take a while. First, you will need to open three panels. No! No, no! This is no good, Master! You have nearly detonated my thermal core three times in a matter of minutes! Supplication. Perhaps it would be best if you desisted your efforts for the moment, me- I mean, Master. This seems to be going nowhere. Statement. Now, supplication. As you desire, Master. How 
may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? How I came to be a Jedi? I am sure you would not find it very interesting. Are you sure you would like to hear? Well, it goes back a number of years. Back on my homeworld, we did not see Jedi very often, especially where I lived. The hind end of space. A pit of a world, to be sure, where Jedi rarely tread. But we had heard of them. Well, everyone had, so that is not to be unexpected. Champions of truth, defenders of justice, heroes of the Republic. It was very easy for a child to be enthralled by their image, their mystique. Maybe I was one of those children. Yes. Yes, I did. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. I was old, and maybe a little enamored. They were quite striking, especially the tales of their leader. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi, to lift myself out of the rut I had been living in for years, and to make a real difference as the Jedi were. <laughs> the foolish delusions of a child, but this child made it happen. As soon as I was able, I left my world and went in search of them. I found them and was accepted. I had been living my dream on Dantooine for several years before you came, although perhaps I was not entirely ready for it, or not completely suited to the task. Otherwise, I would not have fallen. But thanks to you, I have been redeemed. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. Action is what is needed. Hey there, what can I do for you? Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay, have it your way. How can I help? I do. I've been watching you, studying you closely to see what kind of progress you've made since your training at the hands of Master Zahar. You never give up, do you? I admit, I'm interested in you. I find you intriguing, compelling even, but it's not what you think. You have a great gift. You have an awesome command of the Force, and I tremble when I think of how you might misuse it. What? I, no, of course not. Not like that, anyway. In many ways, you are... You are dangerous. You could be the savior of the galaxy. Or you could bring untold destruction upon us all. I've seen how you've resisted many temptations and continue to walk the path of the light side. Very commendable. But I'm afraid you might stray from this path. You need to see what the dark side represents in its entirety. For it is what we battle. Only the wisdom of a Jedi Master can truly explain this. But I will do my best to make you understand. The dark side is not simply giving in to anger, temptation, or to use the force to destructive ends. These things only lead to the dark side. The dark side grows stronger and more insidious the closer you draw to it. It begs you to surrender to it, to release all its terrible power, and it becomes harder and harder to resist. And once you stop resisting, it's too late. It twists you up inside and turns you into a mockery of everything you once stood for. I am no less resistant to temptation than any other. I simply have the benefit of training that you do not. But even the training of the Jedi might not be enough to save us. We need only to look at the atrocities which have been committed by those under its sway to understand the terrible, corrupting evil of the dark side. 
Millions dead, and far more suffering. What sort of person would you have to become to perform such deeds gladly? One who serves the light does not strike down an innocent. We take arms against the dark side and the injustice that follows it only. It's so easy to think that we would never fall prey to such a horror, that we have unlimited control, vigilance, and foresight. If only that were true. The Sith have become powerful because there are many Jedi who've succumbed to the lure of the dark side and joined their cause. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause, to use their own knowledge against them? We are weakened while they are strengthened, so we must harden our hearts and do whatever is required to fight against the dark side, even when the battle becomes wearying. I don't know. The vision of our future is clouded by shadows cast from the dark side. But I sense something ominous lurking in those shadows. But words alone cannot save one from the dark side. Come, we should continue with the task at hand. When the time comes, I only hope we are all strong enough to do what we must. Yes, what's on your mind? Have I been quiet? Suppose I have. I guess I just don't like being left out of the loop. Left out of the loop, you know, not being told anything, strung along. It's really starting to irritate me. For one thing, I want to know what the Jedi Council said to you. They pulled you in there and refused to tell me a thing about it. I'm rather curious to know what went on, and why they didn't keep you on Dantooine for training. Isn't that strange? And why is that? You were a great help on Terrace. But why would they keep you with us? Don't they... don't they have to train you? A bond? What kind of bond? You mean to say that they told you that you were tied to Bastila in some way? Huh. <laughs> I have trouble believing that. You're a neophyte Padawan who's been saddled with the responsibility of tracking down these star maps. Why? That's not normal. I am not trying to provoke you or to imply that you're somehow responsible for the Jedi Council, but give me a hand here. There has to be a reason. And what does that mean? Well, is this more of that destiny garbage that the Jedi keep talking about? Well, that can't be it. Well, I'll tell you this much, I'm not gonna wait around until I'm betrayed again. Yeah, we'll just see about that, won't we? Look, I didn't mean it that way. I want to get to Saul, not... No, no, forget it. It just seems that all I can do is insult you, isn't it? Just forget I said anything. Let's, let's just get on with what we were doing. 